Hi, I'm Tom and in this video I will show you how to correctly fill attributes values in IFC schema. I will use this example of a door where I have got four of these interior doors and they have got the same type. So to understand this video I recommend you to watch my previous tutorial where I explain how IFC types and instances or occurrences work in IFC schema. I will be using IFC door element as an example in this video and I will mainly concentrate on the description, name and tag attributes. These three attributes are present with most IFC elements. I'm using bonsai beam for the demonstration purpose but the information provided here is independent of any software package. There are no strict rules on IFC naming conventions, so the information provided are basically recommendations so that the naming follows the IFC schema idea. The naming is also dependent on the area that you are creating your project in and also depending on the project or on your company but some rules should be universal. So let's get to naming my four interior doors and these four doors have a common type. So I will select the type and first I will fill in attributes of the type. So I will go to edit mode and first off is the name attribute. This is the descriptor of the type in this project. So typical for the door I think internationally is to have door type D01, D02 etc. So I will name this door type D01. Now the second attribute I will fill in is the description and this is a basic description of the type. So I can type in uh, leaf door interior. The interior information should also be included uh, in, the, in the property of this door type but I can also write it here, it's okay for me. Now what may be confusing is the tag attribute which you might actu actually think should be this D01 but in IFC schema this tag attribute is used by the authoring software for its identifier. So Revit or Archicad type uh, a number which identify this, uh, this type. So in Bonsai BIM I don't have to fill it in. This tag is filled in automatically by your authoring software. So this is quite important as the name, description and tag might be sometimes confused. Now the attribute global ID, you should not mess with this. This is automatically again filled in by your authoring software and this identifies the object uh, basically in the whole world. The GUID is a unique number of the object. And then you have the predefined type and element type. Uh, well, the predefined type I think uh, it's clear there are some enumerations which you can select. So if I select door, this predefined type is door and the element type should be empty if I have predefined type selected. The only time I uh, type in information into element type is if I select user defined and then I should fill in element type uh, so that it's more clear what the type is. So you know if the if my door is not door, gate or trap door it might be something else and I might uh, type here time traveling door or uh, anything that's not in the predefined type. But for me this one is actually door so I will have no nothing uh, I will not use the element type attribute. Now the operation type is a, an attribute which is typical just for IFC door and 
you may have your door type uh, with a set swing but let's say for me I have a door type this one and each of the instances can have different uh, different opening to the swing left or swing right so I will set here not defined because it's not defined in the door type but it's defined in instances so these are the basic attributes of the door type filled in and I will save them and now I will take a look at the instances so I will select this door instance or occurrence and you can see that it has got no name or description so now I have an option to have these four doors with no name and no description at all because uh, if I would let's say create a schedule I would look into the type uh, into the type uh, attributes so if in my schedule I just need to know how many objects of this types there are I don't need to name these door instances but maybe in the schedule I need to list all of my instances and I want to have them named so basically I will again go to the edit mode of the of this uh, instance and again in the name there will be a descriptor so I'll, maybe I will count the doors it depends in my country probably I will type in left as a, as a door swing left but let's say I just want to count each door as an instance uh, so I can list it in my schedule so maybe I will type in name 01 and the description I probably don't need to describe this door or if I wrote a description the description will be related to this instance so maybe it would be door uh, door to bedroom 01 but I probably wouldn't describe each of the door like so but just to just to show you that it's related to to this uh, to this uh, door and you could actually get this information otherwise so this this might be a duplicate information but it, it should be okay now the global ID you should not mess with it's a unique ident identifier of the object and the tag again in bonsai beam it remains empty in Revit or ArchiCAD it's filled in by the by the software so you don't fill in the tag now here I've got instance operation type whether it's left or right so I can actually for each of these interior door I can select the operation type and I can also set overall height and uh, overall width so now I will save these attributes and you can see that they are filled in and what's important to note is that some of the attributes are inherited from the type and some are not so the name is not inherited the description is not inherited from the type uh, and uh, uh, but some other other things like predefined type uh, are inherited so for some of the attributes you look at the instance for some of the attributes you would look uh, at the at the type when you are creating a, a schedule so I would do the same here uh, for this one let's say it would be door number 02 and it's a uh, swing left this one would be 03 and and actually this one would probably be again right uh, like so and this one uh, would be 04 so I have got uh, my door instances identified by the by the number what's important to mention is that these names and descriptions either either instance or type they describe the object inside of your project they are not manufacturer information you have got uh, IFC properties where you can fill in manufacturer information and so now let's say for this exterior door I will again select the door type 
and the door type would be name D02 and I will name it leave door ex the description exterior not the name so this would be this would be how I would uh, how I would fill in attributes of another type of door so this is how you should fill in common attributes so they are understood all around the world I'm recording this video because I myself got quite confused about the name description and the tag attributes and how I should fill them in uh, and uh, I found the information some of it on the IFC schema description and some of it on bonsai BIM web page and some of it in forums where I would like to thank Dion Malt who described it clearly and removed some of the confusion. Now let's take a look at how not to fill in attributes. So this is a sample file and it's a Revit uh, IFC export and it's the default Revit IFC export. So you can see if I select this door instance, you can see that I've got this door type and here you can see the name attribute uses basically the door type name also in the name of the instance so this is duplicate information and this should not be here and Revit also places uh, probably a number of the door so this is duplicate information which uh, probably should not be there in my opinion also there's an object type information where the where the type information is duplicated again so i think uh, also if there's a predefined type set and it's not uh, user defined the object type should be empty at least that's uh, what i think uh, now so just to edit this to make it a little bit more correct i would delete this in the name the description is empty that's okay and you can see that the tag was filled in by Revit and this is a number that Revit uses so uh, it's not uh, user user facing although it's the uh, you can see that it's the same as the as the number that it appended at the, at the name so again kind of a duplicate information now if we take a look at the door type so i will select the door type now uh, i'm looking at the door type uh, attributes so here you can see it's placing a name uh, i think this is either the type name or the family name from revit and but it's placing it in the name attribute and this is more of a description so and also i probably would not use the i would not use the uh, the dimensions of the door in the description because you've got parameters for that so let's say i would actually edit it like this so this would be description and i would leave the name i would leave the name empty or there should be again be given some some uh, random number if it's made by the by Revit automatically you should probably use the tag parameter from the Revit and place it into the into the name so uh, this is another information the the name of the of the type or the description does not have to be filled in so it can be left empty so you can see some problems that lead to uh, lead to data overload and data duplication with the with some of the default uh, exports in this example from from revit so hopefully if you are a revit user this video will help you with setting up uh, the ifc export so this is the end of the video if you disagree with some of the opinions provided in this video 
let me know in the comments below what you think is a mistake and what should be done in a different way. I hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next one.